Um, so the Where We All Belong campaign was highly emotive and worked well with the target audience to begin to bridge the gap between the GA and my GA. However, our goal is to reach out to new members, especially those who might feel marginalised by the GA, and welcome them with open arms. So we knew from research carried out by the GA, GAA that they had identified five key segments of their audience. And after further research, we decided to focus on choosing the newbie. So we choose to target newbies because we felt that by opening doors to completely new members, it could reopen doors for others who felt dis disconnected from their clubs. We chose to target 18 to 34 year olds as we felt there are already a number of avenues currently available for, available for children, such as summer camps and in-school training, which makes it easier for them to get involved. Adults, however, between the ages of 18 and 34, have a harder time getting involved in their local GAA club and overcoming barriers that might be preventing them from joining. In order to find out more about our target audience, we conducted an array of both primary and secondary research. We are also incredibly grateful to be able to examine extensive research that the GA had previously carried out. With all these, this helped us to further develop our further insight into the target audience. So now I'm gonna pass you off to Dave, who's gonna bring you to our findings and our strategy. Thanks, Maeve. So of course, we can't talk about anything this year without addressing COVID-19. It's been a trying time for everyone, and our target demo was no exception. Even before the pandemic, things weren't looking great in the mental health front. This is an age where life satisfaction is at its lowest, and we see a downward trend of people feeling less connected to their friends and family. Just under three quarters of our demographics stated in polling that they had suffered significantly in terms of mental health during the pandemic, with one fifth saying that they had felt depressed all or most of the time. In spite of these hardships, though, our audience is resilient. They maintain a healthy interest in staying fit and active. We're seeing projections that coming out of lockdown, people are looking for sports that are going to help them reclaim a sense of agency and adventure that they lost being stuck indoors. We're looking at things like skateboarding and rock climbing, which are all solitary pursuits, nothing team-based, which is concerning for us. So we looked into the root causes. A lot of it came down to a feeling of insecurity regarding skill, feeling worried that people wouldn't be good enough for a team. That was a common answer we saw in our surveys. Early on in our research, I was speaking to a GAA correspondent for a local paper and I had to ask him, so much of your life is wrapped around this sport. Why is it that you've never actually played it? His response, do I look like I play hurling? And the crazy thing about this is he did. This was a perfectly normal, healthy young man. So what do people think a GAA player looks like? Well, turns out the answer is quite intimidating. People see their local clubs as these tight-knit communities where friendships are already established. There's this recurring idea showing up in our surveys and interviews that because people have been training together since they were children, they're all amazing at the sport and there's no room to play catch up. There's this overly serious, no fun allowed image that keeps rearing its head, even when it doesn't make sense in the context of everything else we're hearing, even from the same people. So immediately we've got our human problem with it. Newbies are hesitant to join team sports because they fear they won't belong and their abilities won't be good enough. Now, in spite of their reservations about joining, perceptions of clubs are still positive. The image of the GAA as a strong, supportive community is something that resonates with people. They're just having a hard time seeing themselves as part of it. It makes sense. There's an intimacy to closeness, but that intimacy comes with a price, and that's a sense of impenetrability, a sort of where do I fit into this group hug? This is especially hard to overcome when belonging comes with a perceived set of strings attached in the form of athletic requirements. People have absolutely wonderful things to say about the GA, as you can see here, but they're going to need a little extra push if they're going to get involved. So we looked at what else do they want from the sport. Our own research told us that they're looking for somewhere relaxed yet energetic, somewhere they could have just have fun and make friends to sustain their mental health. Our secondary research is supporting this. Across the board, we saw fun as a key motivating factor for getting involved in sport. Scoring goals and winning cups, it's great and everything, but there's a long road to reaching that point for newbies, which brings us to our human fruit. Newbies just want to feel welcome to make mistakes. They want to fall in the dirt, pick themselves up, and have a laugh about it afterwards. And they can't do that if they're feeling like a burden to other people winning. What's interesting about winning is that if you actually look at what's important to people who are involved in the game, winning isn't really on the radar as much as you think. 
looking at the data given to us by the GA, we can see that when it comes to what people value, winning isn't even on the list. The closest we've got is this word pride coming in at fourth place, but still paling in comparison to things like community and getting closer to family and friends. The only place we're actually seeing winning show up in any meaningful capacity is when we ask people about their absolute number one favorite memory of the sport. But even then, it's still neck and neck with stories about friendship and camaraderie, a lot of them even in the context of losing games. In broad strokes, what people like about their GAA is exactly what newbies want from it, which brings us to our brand advantage. People don't love trophies. They love the people who won them. They love the people in the stands beside them while they watched them being won. They love the people who painted the pitch and washed the jerseys and drove the beat, drove the beat up minivan to get the team where they were going. They care just as much about what happens off the pitch as on it. They love the clubhouse points and the Kayleys and the bake sales because the GAA, above all, offers a sense of community and belonging unlike any other. This quote from our ethnography just says everything about the GAA that current advertising isn't yet should be. What I'm saying is, if you want to give hurling a go, there's a team in South Dublin that wants you there. The crack is great, your ability level will be catered for no matter what, and you will be valued. Our strategy is to take that sentiment and give it the attention it deserves. Show newbies that to join the local GAA, the only skill you need is curiosity. We want to show people how they can get involved in it. And it's not by being a rock star athlete. It's not by knowing the rest of the team from when we're 10 years old. If you want to be part of the GAA, the only thing you need is the confidence to put yourself out there and give it a go. We want to get people, if my skill level is not good enough, maybe I should give it a try. And people will be irritated by my lack of ability people would happen to see me grow. And even if I was good enough, I wouldn't belong here anyway. To my GA is welcome to anyone, and from it's too serious and commitment heavy for me, to there are casual and fun ways to get involved. Our tone is welcoming, sincere, and relatable. It's a human voice for a human problem, and here's our creative team to talk you through what that looks like. Thank you so much, Dave. So, in our brief, the GAA outlined how the Where We All Belong campaign is working to bridge the gap between their GAA and my GAA for its current members, something it's doing really successfully. However, we realized through our creative development that what we're trying to do is actually bridge yet another gap, the one that exists between our target audience and their local GAAs. Our target audience just don't see themselves in the GAAs advertising and consequently find it quite hard to relay it or see themselves joining. Our campaign bridges this gap while showing them that belonging to the GAA is more than just playing, scoring or winning. It's full of little moments, belonging and human connection. As a team, we were challenged to make people think twice about the GAA and help them to overcome some of the barriers that might be stopping them, to convince them that there is a place for them in the GAA, a place where they are not only wanted, but valued. And this leads us to the big idea. Long story short. Because, long story short, the GAA is where we all belong. Long story short supports the Where We All Belong campaigns narrative by extending the message beyond current members and addressing some of the concerns that non-members hold about joining team sports. While the Where We All Belong campaign focuses on the moments on the pitch or in the club, Long story short focuses on the long lasting connections, the personal growth, the smaller wins that come from belonging in the GAA. So it didn't take us long to realize that no matter what we did, as a nation of storytellers and avid listeners, stories would have to be told. Therefore, the centerpieces of our campaign will be three static poster ads, which will engage the audience through real stories, inclusion, diversity and representation. Irish people always say it, long story short, but continue to tell the full story anyways. We love the detail. Therefore, we wanted to display the full detailed stories on our out-of-home posters and social content. We decided to use a non-traditional approach to our posters through a topography-led campaign. Our executions will display the stories of three people using a bold type and a unique graphic style to catch the eye of the audience and convince them that the GEA is somewhere that they can belong, grow, and have fulfilling moments like the people in the stories. So the first poster reads, another disappointing result today, but losing couldn't bring us down. 
On the car journey home, me and the lads were belting out Gimme, Gimme, Gimme by ABBA. This is the last thing I thought I'd be doing with this team. Long story short, I think I'm here to stay. We use multiple fonts to create movement and a playfulness around the character on the poster with a color palette that reflects the mood of the story. The designs use three different colors of text to put further emphasis on different parts. This also allows the story to be understood even at a glance. We decided to add hand-drawn illustrations, which really add to the narrative and visually bring the story to life. The next poster execution reads, when I said I'd join my local club, I was not expecting to be bent over laughing every session. One of the girls on the team splashed another with her water bottle the other night. Next thing you know, the whole team starts a massive water fight. We were soaked through and belly laughing. Long story short, I think I'm here to stay. This story highlights the friendships and laughter that can be had within the GAA. The final poster reads, I'm heading to my first training session tonight. The coach was on the ball and added me to the group chat straight away. I had no idea Chloe from my economics lecture played too. I'm going to meet her at the corner beforehand. What a small world. Long story short, I think I'm here to stay. While the stories vary, there are two lines of copy which repeat throughout all three ads. Long story short, I think I'm here to stay. These candid words completely sum up the aim of our campaign showing how regardless of the contents of the story, each of these people have found themselves with somewhere to call home in the GAA. So then finally moving on to social, here we have the three stories displayed on the official GAA Instagram feed. These social posts encourage people to share their own story using the hashtags long story short and GAA belong. So in terms of video, we decided against creating a TV ad as the Where We All Belong campaign is still in circulation and their video has proven to be quite effective. So instead, we chose to extend the narrative of Long Story Short by creating two short 20 second social media videos and they'll further tell and bring the stories of GA life to life. So the first ad further tells the story of the first poster advertisement that Orla just brought us through there. Um, I won't go through it in too much detail as you kind of already know what happens, but we see the story starting with a close-up shot of the disappointment of the loss. Um, and then it's followed by the deflated walk to the car. And then once inside the car, that's where the magic of the story is revealed. That gimme, gimme, gimme moment, which is the real win really. So over that ad, the vo voiceover will be of the Mark, Mark, the main character. And it will be another disappointing result today, but losing couldn't bring us down. On the journey home, me and the lads were belting out Gimme 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 by ABBA. If Dave could kick a ball as good as he could hit those high notes, we probably would have won today. This is the last thing I thought I'd be doing with this team. Long story short, I think I'm here to stay. GAA, where we all belong. We believe that the Long Story Short campaign has potential to go beyond the three years that we've been given. So we chose to tell a different story that you haven't heard yet and you probably wouldn't expect the GAA to release. So this ad is named Paddy's Field. So the advertisement starts with a team huddle and is uh, quickly moved on to inside the huddle. And once inside the huddle, we can see that this isn't just a normal football team. These are players of club members of different ages, genders and roles within the club. So we see the coach um, giving them their team talk. So he'll say, right, lads, this can't happen again. Izzy, I want you getting around the back of him. Kelly, you'll get the right corner. Amir, you go out left. Then Lisa can get in and get it. Long story short, we're getting those balls back. <laughs> in the next scene, we see their competitor and he's an angry looking bull. We move away from, we pull out from the bull and see that he's standing in a field with all the balls that the team has lost along the week. We then pull out again and see the team about to go in and retrieve the balls with some of the other members of the club standing back for moral support. And the final scene will be the GA where we all belong logo. Um, this story is relatable to those living and playing sports in rural areas, but also entertaining to those who might not be able to relate. The story emphasizes long story short narrative, while the community aspect highlights that your, your club is where we all belong. 
I'll pass you on to Mike to talk us through our audio ads. Thanks, Zoe. Um, the audio ads will reinforce the campaign message in an evocative way, with slight variations on the stories we've already provided. These will appear on podcasts and on Spotify and really strive to connect with the demographic. These ads will be framed in such a way that other than the voiceover, there's no real indication of who in particular they're referring to, but they'll still set the same candid, relatable and inspiring tone as the, as the poster and video ads. The focus will be directly on the, on the smaller wins within the GAA and use the same lines of copy and as the video and poster ads. So this is a fluidity throughout all of the campaign elements. We've mocked up some of the audio ads um, for you to listen to now. My body is finally listening to me because now when I run for the bus, I can catch the bus and my breath. All because I started off trying to beat Jamie's lap time. Long story short, I think I'm here to stay. GAA, where we all belong. I thought I'd never be able to fit in. Then I met Aoife and Sean and Emer. Turns out there's nothing like being yourself, except when you can do what other people. Long story short, I think I'm here to stay. GAA, where we all belong. So one of our tasks that came direct from the GAA in our brief was that this campaign would have to drive new pathways to participation at club level, something that could be activated locally as well as on a national basis. While we feel as though the advertising accomplishes this by helping people to overcome the physical and mental barriers that they associate with joining team sports, we noticed in our research that there was a gap in the market for a more casual and less competitive, but still active GAA membership. One that helps you meet people without the long-term commitment of joining a team. One that lets you develop skills, but without fear of failure. One that is current, flexible and accessible, no matter where you are in the country. And so, GAA More was born. Given that the name means big in Irish, as well as sounding like more in English, GAA More is a new accessible fitness initiative sub-brand for the GAA. One that will be rolled out across the nation, a membership to bridge the gap for people who don't think the GAA is for them. GAA More focuses on fitness and skills development without the competitiveness of a team, a welcoming hand for all ability levels, with a focus of enjoying the best of the GAA in a fun and accessible way on your own terms. Of course, no two clubs are the same. So it's entirely up to the club to decide what they can or are able to offer. So that might mean access, supervised access to gym equipment during the day, special classes in beginners Gaelic, hurling and camogie in the evening, or maybe basic strength and conditioning training on the weekends. But what GAA More does is open up the local GAA clubs to the wider community and gets people in to their local GAA club. Very importantly, GAA More is open membership. It's flexible. People can sign up at a national level on Fuerin, GAA's membership platform, and then go to the club nearest them. This would really suit the likes of college students because they might have to travel home on the weekends and have a local club nearby, but be able to go to a club in their college town during the week or the city worker who might be looking for a place to exercise before work, during lunchtime, or when they get home in the evenings. Imagine being able to provide them access to a network of fun and active places that you can rely on up and down the country. Having already gotten interest from several non-GAA members, as well as clubs themselves, we believe that this particular initiative would prove highly successful for clubs up and down the country, as well as for the Im image of the organization as a whole. Additionally, it could be beneficial for clubs in the long run. Consider GAA more a stepping stone because what starts as skills and casual practice could very well end up as a pathway to team playing if people can just be shown that they have the skills and the talent to make it. As this campaign will be predominantly social led, we will utilize paid, earned, owned and shared social media content to be a hub for the visual language and core message of the campaign. Given our target market, the posters and video ads will run on various social media platforms, including Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and a newer addition that has been growing in popularity among our chosen mar target market, TikTok. Activity on these platforms will be maintained throughout the entire campaign, from social posts, stories, paid ads, shared content, and we will be encouraging user-generated content to the use of hashtags and features. 
People love sharing stories almost as much as they love hearing them. So we're going to promote this through the use of the hashtag long story short to get people to share their own stories about the GA in a variety of ways, from short form tweets to Instagram posts to one minute TikTok videos. We will also be using the GA members shown in the New Girls documentary to start this trend and encourage their followers to share their own stories too. This will bring the campaign to life for people and build a narrative that the GA truly is where we all belong. We are also going to use Irish influencers from a diverse range of backgrounds and topics of interest to promote the campaign and show them that getting involved in their local GAs in a variety of ways, including traditional team playing to GA more. This will allow their followers to see what their clubs have to offer and how great their local clubs really are. to developing an active outreach campaign, we were also tasked with the challenge of developing the GA.E belong landing page. So we wanted to turn this into a useful hub that will streamline the sign-up process for everyone looking to get involved in their local GA club. The belong landing page is currently a placeholder for the Where We All Belong campaign. However, what we have done is change this into the driver of participation with clubs at grassroots level. Here people can easily find out what the GA has to offer and find the right way to get involved for them. We believe for many newbies, GA more would be the right avenue for them to participate initially. So we have emphasized this on the website, although information on all sports and pathways to participation can be found. Here people can find out about what GA more has to offer and provides a simple and easy to follow sign up process. Additionally, having undertaken an audit of our 100 GA club websites, we discovered that information uh, was varied in terms of completeness the quality and also the accessibility to this information. So with this in mind, we created a Find My Club database, which can be filtered by location, sport type, and also ability level, allowing everyone, and newbies in particular, a seamless route to finding the right club for them. Team Pages will also provide all the necessary contact and location information and a quick link to join to firm, the GA's own membership management software. Ultimately, we have created a platform to enable a simple and easy sign-up process for everyone looking to become a member of the GAA. So, long story short, we believe that this creative idea has the capability to go beyond the initial three years of the campaign, as there will always be stories to tell and people to tell them too. Additionally, by building on the GAA's current strapline, we've created the opportunity to build a new narrative around the GAA, one that feels a bit more open, more welcoming and more inclusive for new members. So I'll pass you on to Emer now, who'll take you to our media plan. Thanks, Glenn. So as previously mentioned, we're focusing our campaign on a broad audience of 18 to 34 year old newbies. From a media perspective, it is our job to understand the media consumption habits of this audience in order to identify the best channels to deliver the campaign in, a mo in the most efficient and effective way. So by using the TGI database, we identified that digital was the most consumed channel with our target audience spending an average of 35 hours per week online. The other highly consumed channels included video and audio. Hence, we will be using a multi-channel approach, which will be a digital led with social and video as our main touch points. Although television was a popular medium among our audience, making up 19 hours of their week, as we previously mentioned, we opted against using the use of TV due to the fact the GAA has an existing TV ad from their Where We All Belong campaign that has proven to be highly effective. So we will be launching our campaign in the first week of April, 2022, over an eight week period. We felt this was the best time to launch our campaign as it would not be overlapping with alternative GAA campaigns, leagues or championships. April also marks the time of year when the weather is getting better and our target audience are looking to get active for summer and involved in new things, which would work perfectly with our GAA more new si membership signups. As previously mentioned, we will be using multiple media channels, which will be digital led with a combination of both social and video. This approach will be split into two phases, awareness and participation. 60% of our budget will be allocated to our awareness phase and 40% of our budget will be allocated to our participation phase. We've broken down our media mix and media budget and will give further breakdown of our phases as we continue. So the objective of the first phase will be to increase awareness among our target audience. We will allocate 60% of our budget into awareness as it is the number one job we need to do as our target audience are not currently engaged with GAA. We aim to do this by utilizing social, video, as well as out of home and audio. 
we will run our digital videos and static images on both paid and owned social media and YouTube channels. YouTube is going to be the main channel we're using for digital video. It's going to be live across a five week period and it's going to deliver a 55% unique reach. It's going to be supported by social where we will use in feed and story video formats. In audio, we're using Spotify, Acast and Audio One where we will further reach our target audience and raise awareness. All of this will be supported by Out of Home, which will go live a week after video activity has begun and we're targeting six sheets only when we're focusing on the Dublin region. The objective of the second phase is to turn the awareness we have generated in, fa in, fa in phase one into action by driving participation. We will retarget the audience that we have engaged awareness with in phase one of our campaign, as well as broadening our audience to reach people who are interested in the GA but are not current members. So we will use a combination of social, editorial and search in order to drive traffic to the GA website on the long landing page in order to increase our membership signups. Social will be used to deliver a 51% unique reach and editorial will also be used with Joe.ie and Her.ie for social takeovers and content pieces to drive participation and increase connection to the GAA. We chose Her.ie and Joe.ie as they're the most popular websites among our target audience. All activity will also be supported by search throughout our campaign, directing the audience back to the GAA website. So as, see, as previously seen in the creative section, we plan to use social influencers to drive our campaign uh, to our target audience. As influencers are a huge part of our target audience's media consumption, we wanted to utilize a broad range of macro and micro influencers to promote GA more and encourage their followers to sign up and get involved with their local clubs. These influencers have a huge amount of followers with a combined following of 4.2 million, which will have a wide reach with our target audience. These influencers will have posts and stories of GA more and incorporate swipe up and embedded links in their post, which will drive traffic to the website. By using a combination of social, editorial and search, we will increase reach and engagement effectively. So here we have our media plan, which as you can see has been divided into our two phases of awareness and participation, which will run over an eight week period starting the first week in April, 2022. Uh, as you can see, our awareness phase is highlighted in red and our participation phase in blue. So in order to achieve our objectives, we have identified both our media and brand KPIs. For our media KPIs, we will reach 65% of our target audience of 18 to 34 year olds and deliver 7,000 visits to the GA website. For our brand KPIs, we aim to increase membership signups by 5% and increase in brand connection by 15% year on year. So here we have included an overall break breakdown of our campaign to represent our total budget allocation. So to conclude, by identifying our target audience's media consumption habits, we feel our campaign will best resonate and attract our target audience demographic by using combination of media touch points with a digital led campaign to deliver optimum results. I will now pass you over to Jordan for our campaign conclusion. Throughout our research and strategizing for the GA, we realized that what we needed to do was help our target market overcome the physical, mental and emotional barriers that they associate with joining the GAA. At the same time, we wanted to evoke the feeling that GAA members told us about how they feel about their clubs. This inspired our curiosity-led one-line strategy to make people think twice about the GAA, as well as our creative executions and activations, which perfectly complement the GAA's ongoing advertising campaign. We believe this campaign has the power to not only help our target audience, but to go well beyond the initial three year limit. This is because as long as there's stories to tell, we will be here to tell them. Long story short, thank you so much for listening and we really hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you so much guys, well done. So thank you to the Flat Out Agency. I'm going to ask them to leave the call now and we will welcome in the next uh, group who are called Bada Bing, and they'll be able to present their work to you too. So thank you very much, guys, and we'll see you later. Well done, guys. Excellent. Yeah, well done. Okay, I think I see Bada Bing now in the call. Um, so thank you very much for your patience.